Greetings, CPS engineers. My name is Josh with Stella Gamma Publishing, and I'm here to take you on a brief walkthrough of Cepheus Deluxe Enhanced Edition, now out in PDF form on drivethrough.com and soon to be released in print on demand. Um, well, this is actually my first time really looking at the final PDF. So uh, will you please join me on this voyage of discovery and let's, let's look at things together. Let me share my screen and show you what's going on here. Here we are. Okay. So uh, yeah, we are the four, the four of us, Omer, Richard, Josh, and Robert, um, and CPS Deluxe. So, okay, table of contents and let's see so we've got a bunch of stuff in here a lot of it's pretty basic uh, the basic ideas about uh the game rules character generation then traits uh, equipment rules um robots sample robots vehicles weapons then hazard back to game mechanics hazard personal vehicle combat psionics starship operations including starship encounters and detection rules and things like that and then trade and smuggling ship design with the ship design example space combat rules and then common spacecraft designs um, world generation rules social encounter rules some sample npcs some rules for generating xenofauna and referee advice uh, adventure seeds six of them and then Appendix A, our sources of inspiration. Appendix B, the universal world profile, which uh, is a pretty standard thing for 2D6 science fiction that we put as an appendix. Uh, rules for uh, making cyborgs and cheating death. And then aliens, the legal stuff. And then some deck plans. And then an index. We uh, have an index in this one. So let's take a look. Um, <clears throat> Standard, what is a role-playing game? What is new in CPS Deluxe compared to CPS Lite? So CPS Lite was our older version of the rules. Um, and if you're familiar with the older version of CPS Deluxe, the, the one that was released last year, then most of the stuff you'll see pretty much, uh, pretty much the same. Okay, let's take a look at uh, basic stuff here. We've got the, both the authors. Um, and okay, some very bright and vibrant uh, illustrations. This is, I think, out of Terra Arisen. And uh, let's see, that is to say, it's referencing Terra, Terra Arisen, the, uh, our, our setting for CPS Deluxe. Diral conventions, so things like rolling 2D, 2D 2D6. Um, the basic game mechanic is basically just 2D, get an eight or higher. Right, and then add your skill, add your attribute to get an eight or higher. Um, rules for characters collaborating to uh, to get teamwork effects going, so that you can uh, you can have a better chance of succeeding uh, and involving all different players into a specific story. Well, that's fun. Um, we have common target numbers, so easy is six and higher. Average, difficult, formidable, and impossible. Anything lower than six is you just allow. And even you know easy things or average things in the you know in general aren't um, you don't have to roll for things that are just pretty commonplace. It's just when there's pressure or the the stakes are such that failure is is an issue. And of course, fourteen and higher impossible. Anything that the referee would find amusing. Just remember, though, referees, is that when you uh, when you call for the roll and someone makes that fourteen, you have to accept the result. So, um, you know, just, just a little warning there, right? Okay. Um, we have specific rules for advantage. That is to say, roll three dice and choose the best two. Uh, and we have, we, we don't do this in every case. It's just in specific instances where there's call for that. Uh, also, uh, we have hero points. So this is um, something that we've included for, uh, for making the games a little more pulpy, a little more forgiving, for example, and you get two hero points and 
they they're allowed they're used to re-roll dice um either one of your rolls or you can force the referee to re-roll uh to re-roll one of their rolls and then uh, also roll things on trauma surgery so that you can you can survive um <clears throat> So each player starts with two personal hero points, and then the group has an additional number of group hero points equal to the number of players present in that session. So that's that's pretty nice. Okay. And here's just an example of the skill expertise in terms of just sort of so you understand, like um, you know, for medicine and then gun combat, just sort of, you know, we understand where the what the characters um would be considered, right? That's all. Okay, character generation, skills, all the skills here. We shorten the skill list. That was CPS Deluxe, shorten the skill list. Um, languages, we have rules for skill advancement, uh, learning languages, gaining traits, uh, improving characteristics is an optional rule. And then we go straight into uh, non-random character generation. That is, um, you have a, a maximum amount of control over making your own characters, something that uh, a lot of players like. Um, there are rules for CPS Deluxe random character generation that are fully compatible here with the enhanced edition of CPS Deluxe, and those are downloadable for free on drive through. Okay, so you got your six attributes, and you've got the characteristic dice modifiers, then things like you uh we differentiate between characteristic throws where you just roll your characteristic without a skill there's never an unskilled penalty uh, and then you have things like um then when we talk about the uh you know you develop your home worlds your you choose your home world you get one of these skills you choose your career um and then we'll skill packages are at the end but that's what the table is um you choose your career and you go through the process of making the career. We have here the master character generation table. Uh, so this is specific. Uh, this is a really useful table. Um, because this is non-random, it's actually easy if you want to just, you know, if you say, I want to do a character that's, uh, you know, four terms in, right? Well, we see the total skill levels granted is nine. Pick your nine skills. And that includes the the home world skill and it includes everything that you could get you know just pick nine skill levels uh, or i suppose eight and then plus one for the home world skill right roll aging once get two rank increases pick two traits take five mustering out benefits and if you use the event tables in the careers roll on the event tables four times you could do that all at once bam it's done um you lose out on some of the the ability to make a bit of a narrative out of the character's uh, life, but that's that's totally okay. Or you could go term by term um, and still have a lot of control in uh, non-random character generation. All right. Uh, we have rules for switching careers here. Um, and then the actual career tables, right? So uh, agent, army, pretty standard stuff. That's okay, right? Belter, colonist, Elite, uh, Marine, Merchant, Navy, Pirate, Rogues, and Drifters, Scholars, Scouts. Okay. Then we have the Life Events and the Unusual Events Table. And so each one of these career tables, by the way, has uh, their own event table, has its own mustering out benefits tables. And so you can maximize the control over your character by not rolling on the event table, so you don't have any randomness except for the mustering out benefits, or you can uh, you can introduce a lot of randomness without going fully random. Okay, and uh, so that's uh, that's really up to the table. It's up to the referee, um, and uh, we hope you enjoy both the random and non-random character generation options that uh, we've put out. All right, mustering out benefits, things like retirement pay, aging injury rules prison so you can go to prison and if you uh you go to prison you pick one of these skills and then you roll the prison event table and uh well anything can happen so that's that's fun times uh injuries and then if you are injured what happens and how much money does it cost to replace your your missing limbs with cybernetic limbs 
Uh, finally, we do things like calculate stamina and lifeblood, finalize the character, and we've given you one, two, uh, three character generation examples. Okay. Uh, finally, as well, just one thing, we have the Iron Man rule, right? So if you get a, uh, you can do it if you, if you, uh, any injury on the event table during character generation is character death requires that you start over again and making the character. So that's just an option, right? Uh, for those of you who are looking for something a little more old school, that's an option you can do. Okay. So then we uh, have the trait list. So there's a bunch of these, and these are special abilities that the characters can do. And the goal here for a lot of them is to, um, well, just customize the character. They're, in a way, they're very optional. They're completely modular. You don't have to add them in if you don't want to, but they're fun. Um, and yeah, some of them, this is where we were very careful to uh, make sure when is it al allowable to use the advantage rules. So um, we, we're very careful with that because uh, everything is skill based. And so if you have an advantage option all the time for one skill, you're, you, it, it can be pretty overpowering and we don't want to, we don't want to, that to happen. Um, you've got traits that involve specifically the skills and then traits that involve gun combat, melee combat, and then other combat traits, vehicle and spacecraft traits, and then um, more traits that we just had a harder time to put into any one characteristic, any one category. Okay. And uh, yeah, lots of those um, and uh, lots of fun stuff, ways to customize characters and make them uh, unique. Uh, lots of equipment. So here's tech level. Uh, so this is pretty standard for those of you familiar with uh, the 2D6 CPS engine platform, right? Um, here we are at tech level seven, we can reach orbit reliably and have telecommunication satellites. We are here. And then, um, you know, hopefully in the next few years, we're gonna be, we're gonna be here at tech level eight once we, if we arrive at Mars, or we have a, a, a mission to Mars, that'd be interesting, okay. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it gets all the way up to, to 16, handheld plasma and energy shields, all right. Okay. Um, Living expenses, personal armor, you know, armor types, um, cybernetics, right? It's all there. It's stuff that uh, was in Cepheus Deluxe. And, uh, you know, we have also all of the equipment is uh, described in full. Um, and, uh, ambiguities are removed. We've added some extra equipment. People ask for specific things and we totally went for it and made sure that uh, there weren't any serious ambiguities that would, would people would copy, cause people to scratch their heads. No problem. Okay, uh, some pharmaceuticals, just a, a brief, just a, a brief sampling of them. And of course, you know, it's a good example of what can uh, what you can do. Um, we have a basic robot uh, design sequence, right? So you can build custom, custom build robots. Okay? And uh, we have sample robots so that you don't have to custom build robots. You can just throw them right in as is. <laughs> okay. Uh, vehicles as well. Uh, so one thing about the vehicles that we, uh, we wanted to do was um, the standardize everything, at least in terms of their agility, the vehicle's agility, which is the, uh, the vehicle's maneuverability and, and, and acceleration abilities. So we, you apply the agility score to um, position and skill throws in vehicle combat, and we just wanted to make sure that everything sort of made sense. So we zero averaged it. So a lot of uh, vehicles won't have any agility. It's just zero average. And then some will have a plus one or plus two or minus one or minus two, just to uh, show that they're a little more or a little less uh, responsive. Uh, also, we have a completely different set for uh, a set of rules for vehicle damage uh, in Cepheus Deluxe. 
and uh, we have the um, a, a basic conversion table for converting Cepheus engine um, SRD armor ratings for vehicles into Cepheus Deluxe. Um, and so you'd have to do that, I think, on a case-by-case -case basis, but there are some basic guidelines over there. So a whole bunch of sample vehicles, right? And uh, watercraft, groundcraft, aircraft, grab vehicles, right? You name it. Right? We, we went, we went and, and tried to get as much as possible in there. And of course, these are good examples to build other vehicles off of, but we, we do not include a uh, specific uh, vehicle construction system in these core rules. As well, uh, vehicle agility modifiers, as I mentioned, right? So this is, uh, again, a bit of a conversion table. If you're looking at, if you're looking at other vehicles from other games, and you want to bring them into CPS Deluxe, this is a good table to, uh, to uh, give you a point of comparison. Okay. Uh, weapons with all the stat explanations and weapon aspects. We've also, uh, we have changed the auto fire rules, especially the burst rules um, for enhanced edition after much customer feedback and player feedback. Okay. And uh, so we've got ranged weapons, melee weapons, projectile, heavy weapons, energy weapons, and grenades and other explosives. And then we have gunnery weapons. So uh, you've got heavy weapons, which are still uh, portable uh, or crew served sort of weapons, and then gunnery weapons, which are uh, vehicle mounted or, or what well, is basically big, 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 big ones that you, you can't look around on the battlefield. Um, and they all have their aspects and their damage and, and vehicle damage and personal damage. Um, descriptions as well as accessories for small arms. Um, if you want to, uh, you know, give your your personal gun a laser sight, um, you know, and a silencer, you can do that. Things like that, or tripods, and things like that, just to uh, just to give a little bit of customization ability in there. We have all the heavy weapons descriptions, gunnery weapons descriptions, grenades, all that. Okay. Then. Uh, We've done that. Now it's back into some uh, equipment, or not equipment. We've done the equipment, and now we're back into hazards, and so some more game rules. Um, and so this is just uh, these are just some basic rules for fatigue. If you're fatigued, you take a minus one to all your throws. And uh, rules for diseases, poisons, environmental hazards, radiation, temperature. That's that whole thing. Suffocation, falling, starvation vacuum exposure. Then we get into the rules for personal vehicle combat. Um, and uh, so for this, it's pretty basic. Um, no major changes, right? You have two actions per round. You, uh, you can attack, you can charge, they're down over here, right? Attack, charge, you can inspire, you can move, you can do overwatch and there's other options, other typical actions. We list some of them here just to give, again, give a guideline of what exactly is, is an action. Um, there are rules for surprise and initiative and optional rules for simultaneous combat, which makes combat faster and um, a lot scarier. Uh, range combat dice modifier uh, examples here, right? So it's just, if your character is, behind total cover, you're at DM minus four, but it's, uh, you know, if you're prone, uh, you're at minus, you're minus two to be hit. And then uh, if you're prone behind whatever the cover is, so for example here, if you're behind heavy cover, but you still want to shoot at people, then you're going to be at DM minus three. But if you go prone, then you are at DM minus four, and, but you can't attack back. So it's all explained here in the range combat paragraph here. You can aim automatic weapons. So for example, uh, you know, a single shot is just attack and do damage. Burst is you do an attack and there's the weapon has an auto rating and you roll a number of D6 equal to the weapon's auto score. And for a short controlled burst, you add the highest of those D6 results to your damage. Okay. Um, and it's an abstraction, uh, but uh, we wanted to have something that you know, so you can you can really uh, put a lot of fire on one target and increase your damage without absolutely 
um, making that the go-to option at all times. And then finally, full auto is you take the auto uh, score and you can you can make attacks, specific attacks equal to the auto score. So you can fire. If your auto is four, you've got a high rate of fire weapon. You can uh, you can attack four individual targets. Um, there's also suppressive fire, which you can use for full auto. Um, thrown weapons, grenades, the whole thing, blast effects for diving for cover, right? Uh, we have optional rules for dodging and parrying, which are more or less uh, passive. That is to say, you, you choose to either use these rules or the cover rules for dodging, for example. So you use the gun combat skill as a negative dice modifier, but you don't use the cover skill or you, you choose which one, right? So if you're like behind hard cover, you say, I'm behind hard cover, I'm gonna use the cover because it's minus four to hit me rather than my gun combat of two, uh, my, uh, which would be a, a minus two to hit, to hit the character. And um, right, this is this is uh, just something to speed up play to make it a little more pulpy, a little faster, um, and a little less explicitly tactical. But of course, you can you can make that. That's a modular rule you can insert if you like. Uh, grappling rules, um, basically straight out of the CPS engine SRD, uh, with a couple of uh, small tweaks. Uh, the damage rules, um, we, you know, it's been pretty standard uh, since the SRD was out, right? You just take the damage, subtract the armor, and then the rest is applied. Whatever is left is applied to the character. Um, we also uh, we also have rules for armor as penalty to hit, which is a throwback to classic Traveler. Um, and uh, again, that makes... Um, that makes combat a little nastier because there's no armor, there's no damage reduction for armor. It's just a, a two hit reduction. And that's this over here. Um, rules for knockdown wounds. So all this stuff is the same as CPS Deluxe. Um, we've uh, tweaked the morale rules, especially since uh, we've included certain, uh, certain traits that allow you to um, lead uh, NPCs more effectively, and um, and this way uh, we have to make sure that those uh, those rules are are there. Um, the leadership is all, leadership skill is also important for morale. Uh, rules for healing and medical care, and again the trauma surgery stuff that uh, to if you want your character to live through a very very nasty <coughs> wound. Excuse me. Uh, then we have a uh, personal example, a personal combat example. Um, and uh, another one here for uh, suppressive fire and grenade grenade use um, that that comes up. Uh, rules for chases and vehicle combat. There we go. So we have vehicle combat, and um, this is for uh, sometimes you have um, vehicle combats are you know the vehicles are essentially not moving all that much right they they may inch forward very very slowly um but then other time and, and so you use the the regular combat rules there and the vehicle just operates on the on the driver's initiative other times you're going to have chases and so our uh our chase rules are pretty pretty much unchanged from the uh from the cps deluxe rules um you have a position role using one d6 you add the vehicle agility, you add the vehicle, the pilot's vehicle skill and their attribute, and um, you just, you have this on this, uh, you have, you check the position, position table, right? And so if you're tied for position, for example, you each roll a six, then to attack each other at minus two to hit. But if you are, uh, if you utterly utterly dominated the position role and this is entirely narrative right this is this is um it's completely abstracted there's no range uh then you're gonna not only are you gonna be much much higher uh you're, you're not only are you are you uh you're, you're in a serious advantage you get such an advantage you're plus one to hit and remember that the um the target the person lower on the position uh uh, ladder can't attack people higher unless they have turrets 
and even then they're at minus three to hit. So um, we just go over some of the basics of, you know, chases usually last for five rounds, unless you have things like dog fighting or foot chases. We, we have specific rules for foot chases where you use the athletic skill. Um, and then just basic maneuvers in the chases to make, uh, to give some examples of the sorts of things that you could do. And of course, referees and players are free to come up with other ideas using these as basic, basic guidelines. Uh, rules for collisions, attacking vehicles, um, and then the, the uh, damage matrix for collisions. And then we'll have, you have the uh, penetration matrix for actually damaging vehicles um, here. So this is, for example, if you're, if you're firing a heavy weapon against heavy armor, you're gonna do a surface damage. And so you roll 2D and uh, if I roll a five or less, it doesn't do anything, but if I roll an 11, it hits a weapon. If I hit a, if I roll a 12 or higher, I do internal damage and I go to internal, internal damage here. And if I roll again, I can do this. And then if there's, if it's critical, then it's pretty straightforward. If you roll a six or less, you just, the, the, the vehicle is knocked out. Um, and then 10 or more of the vehicle is destroyed and the crew hits and things like that. So, uh, so this is, this speeds up um, vehicle combat considerably and puts the focus on the player's vehicle and making sure that uh, things that happen inside or on the surface of the vehicle can be dealt with by the players uh, and ratcheting up the tension rather than just tracking hit points, right? And all the, all the uh, uh, effects here are, are explained and then there's ideas for repairs. Uh, and then, yeah, rules for Starship uh, when, when those those strangely more common than you'd think uh, uh, instances where um, you're firing ground weapons at starships or you're firing starship weapons at ground targets. Um, well, it generally doesn't go too well for uh, the, the little guy. Um, we have an example of vehicle combat here. Uh, and uh, then we have the psionics rules. And uh, so these are also, uh, tweaked and uh, from the main SRD as well as from uh, Cepheus Deluxe. And we just made sure that everything um, is as unambiguous as possible. Different powers, some basic equipment just to get you started. Okay, Starship operations, so interplanetary travel. Um, this is, uh, we've got um, really two ways you can do it. You can, you can, if you're very specific, you've got this interplanetary travel times by acceleration, by the ship thrust, and then we also have abstract things. So re a region in space, we have two broad categories for, for interplanetary travel. So CPS Deluxe abstracts interplanetary travel and travel time in two broad categories, travel between distant regions within the system and travel within a given region. In a region, um, it takes 2D to 4D hours divided by the ship's thrust rating. And so this is something that um, referees will may have to make a call on. And then between regions, this is uh, the number of days is now 2D to 4D instead of hours. And that's really That's really about it. So we have this over here, right? Destination in a region, 2D to 4D hours for thrust rating and then destination, another region, 2D, 40 days per divided by thrust rating. And so um, you get a basic sense of, of what uh, interplanetary travel is. And then we have interstellar travel, which is pretty much the, uh, the standard it's been since 1977 in terms of six days in jump space. Um, usual stuff, Starship expenses, jump procedure, you know, the mortgage, everything that, uh, you know, the standard stuff from CPS, CPS engine. Um, different ways to make revenue, like taking on passengers, uh, carrying freight um, and mail, charters. Uh, we have rules for electronics uh, and detecting other ships. And um, Starship Encounters. So we use the system types that were developed in piracy and privateering. Um, and just a, a very simple encounter table here, basically. So you have the different kinds of systems and then you roll 2D 
and uh, you hope you don't get a you know traitor P, right? You hope you get the traitor, so they're not going to be pirates, or they don't. They these are when you have a little P there, it means that they will turn pirate, or they can turn pirate uh, based on the reaction roll as well as uh, uh, whatever the, the players end up doing when they're when they encounter the ship. Um, we also have the encounter generation, more rules about them, right? So how far away and how frequent these encounters happen, as well as the ship encounters, uh, a, a basic ship encounter reaction table. Uh, rules on trade and smuggling, right? So speculative trade and uh, all the different goods, the price table, uh, the selling of goods. And here we use, um, again, right, sometimes we'll, you know, depending on how you, this is straight out of CPS Deluxe, the uh, earlier version, um, and uh, the different, uh, you know, you can either do things like say, okay, well, the starport has, uh, you know, traffic rating is high, uh, medium or low, or you can just use the starport code, more or less, and the same thing here. Uh, and then we have purchase dice modifiers and sale dice modifiers. Um, local brokers, there's a problem with the deal. So one of the things that uh, I like doing is making the trade the actual adventure itself. And um, so, for example, why is the deal gone bad? So this is a D60. This is uh, sorry, it's uh, 21, 2, 3, so it looks like it's 36 different things that could go wrong, right? Um, and then the cargo tag. So the cargo is, and here's another 36 of them, D66. The cargo is annoying to a local oligarch. Let the, they let the crew know that they will soon be uh, there to collect it, right? Uh, the cargo is infested with mold, right? The, the tar cargo is normal and innocuous, nothing is wrong, right? Only on a 66, right? Um, so that's, it's just ways of making the, making the trade more tense, making the trade uh, part of the adventure, right? Same thing here, right? Why has the deal gone bad, right? Well, uh, the cargo has already belonged to someone else. The main antagonist is an organized crime boss and someone else complicates things when another antagonist gets involved. So you roll up another antagonist here and considers a PC an enemy. So there's all sorts of ways to turn the trade itself into uh, the adventure. And we have a, uh, a trade example here fully fleshed out from beginning from purchase to transit to arrival on the new system and then uh, sale. And uh, that's it. Okay, all the different goods that are available, all the different, uh, you know, this is all the stuff from the example. Okay. And ship design. Um, so much of this has been uh, tweaked and uh, made sure that everything is consistent and works properly uh, from Cepheus Deluxe. And uh, I'm not a system design ex or a ship design expert. Um, but as you see here, there's just different kinds of light armor and heavy armor. And uh, again, right, so the ship, the way the ship armor rules work is that there is only unarmored light armor and heavy armor, but depending on the tech level, you have different actual kinds of armor. And what this does is it changes the tonnage and cost uh, for, the, for the armor. Different um, small craft drives, we use a percentage of hull tonnage rather than um, the other kind of, of table. That's something that we used in CPS Deluxe. Okay. Armament, all the different weapons. Um, shields, once you get to high enough tech level. Okay. And then crew requirements. And then there's more components, right? Just different neato little components. Okay. And the table for vehicles and how much they take, how much space they take up in the cargo hold. Um, as well, a design example of making a 300 ton light military transport. Okay. Finally, the ship combat rules. And these are from Cepheus Deluxe with some 
uh, some modifications and cleaning up to make sure that they work exactly right. Same thing, position, um, where instead of agility, you use thrust. And um, each bridge station has specific actions that they can take. Um, so there's the captain, the pilot, the sensor operator, the gunner, uh, and the engineer. Okay. And then we have the chip penetration matrix table. So for example, if you have uh, the weapon is, for example, an intermediate weapon and you hit uh, someone with light armor, you're going to do internal damage and you roll here, you roll 2d6 on a ship or on a small craft and you, uh, you apply the damage appropriately. Okay. And now we have a uh, space combat example from Cepheus Deluxe that's been uh, cleaned up and any errata removed. Okay. And this is the entire example here. Three, three rounds of combat. And there's a pilot. All right. Common spacecraft designs. So this is exactly the sort of thing that we uh, we want to make sure it was in the book so that you can start playing immediately. And then rules for world generation. Um, here's the, the basic procedure, 12 steps, and then the tables for generating world, worlds. Trade codes, and the different trade codes. Um, Make sure that everything is uh, everything works properly, and you get the, the sorts of trade codes you need. Uh, bases, allegiances, travel zones, communications, and trade routes—all the stuff that is standard to Cepheus engine—and uh, a uh, an example: the world of Frostfang. Okay. All right. Social encounters. Uh, again, stuff from uh, this stuff that we uh, already gave you in Cepheus Deluxe, and we just wanted to make sure that everything was uh, was uh, consistent and tweaked. And so we have a whole bunch of random encounters in different places. Um, and these are great for um, not just for making the, the you know, this, is, this isn't just for who do you meet at the bar. This is also for referees to be able to design adventures, and they can use some of this stuff beforehand, before the, the players arrive on the scene to have a bunch of different options available. And so they have, you know, it's not just that they have a criminal, they have a criminal encounter, they have an NPC has his problem, right? And so, um, and motivations and physical build and notable characteristics and trustworthiness and why were they hired? And, you know, the patron's most important asked all this stuff just to get the creative juices flowing, right? Uh, business contacts, all that, right? everything here so that the um, referee has tons of, of resources to fall back on. Some sample uh, NPCs so that you can throw, the, the, throw these guys at the uh, player characters immediately um, with basic combat and uh, uh, basic combat uh, statistics, not that they ever get into fights, Oh. All right, and then rules for making um, animals and xenofauna. Referee advice. So this is the same uh, stuff we've seen before, but again, right, we went in and just made sure that everything makes sense. We, uh, we were... Um, we took the opportunity to, uh, you know, make things as clear as possible. Okay, so different factions. These are uh, these are just examples, right? And then um, we put in six adventure seeds, and here we decided to make brand new ones instead of uh, giving the old ones in CPS Deluxe. So now, if there were six in the uh, the first version of Cepheus Lux, now you've got 12 adventure seeds. Um, and again, right, just basic outlines to get the uh, referee going uh, with complications, right? Um, 
and, and that's it, right? And so some of these are just, they're just intended to help the referee um, move forward. And you can always use the, you can always use the complications just to make things a little stranger, a little different, a little more challenging. Uh, keep everyone on their toes, players and referees alike. Our sources of inspiration, um, I think I tried to sneak in a couple of things there, but uh, I don't remember. So, uh, and then the uh, Appendix B is the Universal World Profile. So this is just to standardize it with the rest of the CFIUS engine. So here's Frostfang from before. This is its Universal World Profile. And cheating death. These are rules for uh, creating cyborgs, and uh, not just cyborgs, but full bio reconstruction at a much higher tech level. Um, and uh, alien rules again with game mechanics. So the greys, the reptiloids, the insectoids. Uh, just three basic ideas. And then there's uh, there's this is stuff just to get uh, just to get players and referees going. Uh, and there's always more, uh, as, as these are good examples and you can always use them to build more aliens. And then the legal stuff, which will stop there. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this run through and uh, happy gaming. <laughs>